When should someone quit their day job to become a full-time filmmaker, director? That's an interesting question. Uh, I think that's always a challenge is because I've had, I've had to work with that challenge as well Is like, when do you quit your day job and focus just on your passions, directing, writing, producing, whatever it is. And it's funny is I early on in my career, you know, I was lucky. I said I was, you know, young and I got to direct a couple of movies before the age of 26. And, and then it was like 2009, 2010. And then the whole ec economic recession happened and, you know, trying to maintain myself as a director, filmmaker at that time was challenging, right? So I had to get a day job. I started doing, um, you know, things not even related to filmmaking. I was, I got a day job uh, in uh, uh, tech, in the tech field. So I was doing like QA software testing for companies for a few years. And I was doing that until, you know, a few years ago where I was like, okay, like this is fine. Like I'm starting to sell scripts again. I just did another film. I got an agent now, I got a manager. I can focus more on uh, this path. So it's, and that's why I've said it so many times to other, uh, to other aspiring filmmakers and directors is your career is never gonna be, sometimes it is. Sometimes some people are lucky and they hit it big. Somebody sees their short film, Steven Spielberg sees their short film or James Wan sees their short, says, oh my God, get this guy a feature. And then he directs a movie with Warner Brothers. And then next thing you know, he's even a hundred million dollar movie. And you're like, wow, how did that person get like, that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? But chances are your career is going to be more of that. You do something, get some attention, and then people don't really hire for anything. And then you have to start over again and do another film and write another script and then try it again. And then this time you get to work on a little bit bigger budget and then you learn about the process more and you become a better storyteller. And then you're expecting that film is going to open Canton or Sundance. You're like, oh, I made this incredible feature. It's so cool. It's going to get into sun. It's going to get into so many festivals and you don't get into the festivals you thought you were going to get into. So now you're saying, okay, damn, I thought I was gonna have to quit my job and, and, you know, get a hundred million dollar studio movie. So that's not happening now. So now I gotta, you know, get back to it and grind again, write another script. What's the type of movie that I can make another thriller or another comedy or whatever. So what's my expertise? And uh, you got to go back at it again and try again and, and, and shoot another one. And eventually what you'll look back on is you'll turn around and you'll look at all that process and you're like, wait a second. Each one was just like a little notch up that took you up higher and higher, bigger budget, bigger talent, bigger people, more exposure. And next thing you know, suddenly you're like, oh, I don't even need a day job anymore. I can just quit and... I'm making enough money doing this that I can actually have a sustained career as a filmmaker. Was that your hardest year, the 2009 time? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always been hard years and and uh, good years and successful years and and it's it's up and down. It's hard to say. I could have a hard year in three years, but that's worse than that, right? I can make a movie and critics savage me and stuff happens. Like, oh well, you know. That's the thing I've learned from other successful directors and filmmakers is they don't let that stuff get to them. They're just, they're working, they're making films, they're telling stories. They don't let other people's opinions on whether they should be making films affect them. They just do it. They're like, I'm gonna keep making movies, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what other people think of it. It's like, as long as I'm getting the opportunity, I'm gonna keep doing it. So you have to kind of be that stubborn, dog-headed person where you're saying, this gives me joy and I'm gonna keep doing what I have to do to, to get that. When you were working that um, tech Q, QC job or whatever, yeah. we, I'm sure your mind wasn't totally there at times. No, <laughs> You're <laughs> right, thinking about what's it like, you know, I could do a script about this or something, you know? Yeah, no, it was definitely, <laughs> there was times where, yeah, I mean, um, shit, I got fired from a couple of jobs because I was like not like showing up, you know what I mean? Because I was like doing things that I, you know, showing up late and stuff. But that's the thing is, uh, you know, you have a day job, you, get, you do it to pay the bills sometimes. Like, look, we aren't all lucky. We're not all trust fund babies and we don't all have rich parents or uh, we don't inherit, you know, a lot of money. So gotta get a day job and, and 
it's fine. Like people, you know, throughout their careers, it's okay to have a day job where you're paying your rent. And then when you get, you know, wake up in the morning, I know I was reading this thing where uh, Stephen King, before he was Stephen King, he worked at like, like a laundromat or something, right? I mean, he was waking up early at 5 a.m., writing for 10 pages, then going to work, then coming home. And then his wife was sick for a while, he was helping her. And then he'd write a little bit more and then he'd go to sleep. And that's just the reality of being an artist is, you know, we don't really have that freedom to just, you know, wake up and instantly, you know, we have access to whatever we want. We have to sometimes grind at it and kind of get ourselves there. Was that in his book on writing? I believe so, yeah. Such an excellent book. It is, right? It's great. Because, you know, what was fascinating too is when he talked about when he, quote, made it, then he had new challenges. So right. I think that's what's like this misconception that you could be, okay, now you're without the day job, but now there's a new challenge and that is you're keeping track of your own time. You're keeping yourself on point. 100%. And he talked about how things got diverted a little bit and then that was sort of an eye opener for me. I didn't know. Yeah, no, that, that can happen is, that's the thing is when you are actually making your art, whatever that is, whether it's writing or directing or cinematography or editing, you realize, okay, yeah, you don't necessarily have a boss telling you, I show up at 9 a.m. and you're leaving at six or whatever. But at the same time, you have to now wake up in the morning and be like, okay, you know, I am going to create work for myself somehow, right? I mean, you might not need to do work this week because you just did a job last week, but at the same time, you have to realize, okay, yeah, you did a job last week, you directed a film, you know, for three months, but you never know when your next film is gonna be. It could take a while. You could be ready to go and you got another film and then it falls apart and then it's like, oh crap, how do I pay my rent next month? You know what I mean? So you have to go into that mentality of new problems and new challenges are always gonna be there and you need to be prepared to, to deal with those. That doesn't mean you gotta give up your passion, right? Mm. Just because you're in a day job and sometimes it's good to have a day job in the actual industry that you're working in. So if you're a writer, it's great if your day job is reading other people's scripts because now you're learning from other people. Or if your day job is, uh, let's say you want to be a director, your day job is editing. So now you're editing other directors work and you're seeing, oh, that was interesting or he screwed that up or she screwed that up. So seeing what other people do will definitely during that day job so that when you do get that opportunity, you're using all that experience.